Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Have you robbed God? Will a man rob God? I want to talk about robbing God. I want to talk about God breaking your hands. God pushing you in an accident. God trying to kill someone. God going to snatch away someone that you love so much. Have you heard about these kind of teachings? I'm not going to teach about this, but I'm going to undo the teachings that people have taught. Our friends, teachers, pastors, churches, seminars on tithing and robbing God, you know, God breaking hands and legs and killing people. I'm going to do some undoing a lot of teaching that has gone into our minds. And uh, you might be like, wow, what are you talking about, Bishop? Yes, you have seen. We have looked into the series of how God is a gracious God, how God is a loving God. And that used to bother me. I said, God, if you're loving, if you're so gracious, your mercy endures forever. How can you break my hand? How can you push me into an accident? How can my tire get punctured because I robbed you by not giving a tithe? These are the questions I had for many years. And I'm sure even now you are having these kind of uh, questions and these kind of thoughts. I'm not in no way saying you should not be tithing. We should all be tithing. But we are looking into Malachi chapter 3 and verse 8 onwards. Where this is a famous and well-known verse and the chapter that almost every Sunday, every time at the time of offerings and tithes, giving to God, this particular verse is mentioned. Every church mentioned this all over the world on a Sunday or Wednesday or Friday, whenever they meet. And I want to bring to you how we have robbed God or how we have not robbed God. I want to show you some things. You, your mind will be surprised. You will be shocked to hear all the things that we have uh, learned wrongly. The people have taught us wrong things. Yes. And today, write down, take down the scriptures, what I'm talking about. And it will make a lot of sense if you can go on the YouTube or in, into my previous series of grace series. You will understand the grace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God. How God is a loving, merciful, gracious God from Adam and even now and for generations to come, eternity to eternity. Yes, I showed in those series. I would like you, if you have not heard those series, even if you heard those series, I would like you to go through them again and again and again. It is not easy because I have used a lot of scriptures because scriptures are our base not what I'm saying or what you heard from somewhere else, but what I'm saying, I'm saying it from the word of God and uh, the spirit of God has led me. I have done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of study on these scriptures and I have had to do a lot of unwinding, you know, unlearning in my life from whatever I've learned from the, uh, from my childhood. So, I'm sure I will be rocking the boat. Don't be scared. You're gonna, not going to fall away. I'm going to keep you safe. And God knows the heart. God knows the attitude. But God is not a God of confusion. God is a God who gives a sound mind. He gives us, you know, the, the ability to follow him with a good conscience, with love, with peace, with happiness. So attitude is what we are going to look at and how fearfully, how fear motivated us 
to give to God. How a people have robbed us, not to be robbing God, but people have robbed us, the monies. And we keep sowing and sowing and sowing, but we don't reap because in this chapter 3 of Malachi and verses 8 and down, if you read, it says, I'm going to open the windows of heaven. But we have given so many years and years and nothing is happening because we don't understand God. We don't know God and we have been taught wrong. You know, you're supposed to get a bountiful harvest of what you are sowing, but you're not even getting, you know, you're, you're trying to sow 10%. You're trying to sow whatever you want to give to God, but you're not getting the full harvest. The locusts are eating away your harvest. I want to show you how the locusts have come into your life with wrong teachings. Okay, don't judge me. God is a judge, but write down the scriptures. I'm going to show it to you. And again, the grace series, listen to the grace series. I'm putting it on the YouTube and uh, if you don't have it on the TV coming next series, go on the YouTube. Listen to the Grace series and this will actually add, it's, it's going to be, you know, the topping on that series, this series of tithes. So let us read the scripture. Let us go back and see what is the Bible talking about. Have you robbed God? Verse 8 of chapter 3, Malachi, where, you know, God, 400 years of silence after Malachi and nothing happened. The last things, the last of everything the prophet spoke was the book of Malachi and then God was silent and people keep talking about you see because the God uh, they robbed God God was silent for 400 years did not speak to anybody they were robbing God robbing God robbing God and I would tell you what is going to happen verse 8 chapter 3 Malachi will a man rob God yet you are robbing me but you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and in offerings, you have withheld. You are cursed with a curse. For you are robbing me. This whole nation is robbing me. I'm reading from the Amplified. Verse 10, bring all the tithes, the tenth into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house and test me now in this says the lord of hosts if i will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you so great a blessing until there is no more room to receive it then verse 11 i will rebuke the devourer insects Hey, plagues for your sake, and he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor will your wine in the field drop its grapes before harvest, says the Lord of hosts. Wow. I know if you keep going down, if you read down, you will know all the things that we keep hearing all the time, all the time, all the time. How God has kept the devourer because you have not given. He sent the devourer and he has eaten every uh, fruit of your hand. And he's saying, I will open my windows and bless you. See, we've heard this from a, from her childhood. We have heard this. I want to tell you Genesis to Malachi. It's an Old Testament. I want you to understand this. Many people say, hey, it's Old Testament. Don't talk about Old Testament. Old Testament is gone. We are now in the New Testament. We have to follow the New Testament. Uh, you know, and uh, some of them go to the extreme saying that, no, 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 no. We have to follow not the New Testament because they are all uh, disciples of Jesus. We will only follow what Jesus said. And uh, Jesus, what he said is all marked in the red. I want the Bible with red. I will only follow the red. You know what Jesus said? If you don't keep or observe the least of my commandments, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. And in that red, it says, if you're angry, you're committing a murder. 
if you are looking at someone with a bad look you committed adultery and so on it talks about a, your righteousness should surpass the righteousness of the pharisees wow go sell everything and follow me because you can have treasures in heaven and uh, be perfect like my heavenly father is perfect can you see all these in red people want to follow the red i want the red jesus i'm not concerned about old testament not concerned about anything with the disciples the red yeah the the the, the teachings we've been hearing for many 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 years and the church has been built upon fear fear based teachings have come into the church why would i want to follow jesus if he's going to break my legs hands head meet with an accident why what is different between jesus and you know whatever in the world why would i want to follow jesus everybody says jesus is a loving god he is a peace loving person christianity is a peace loving community and blah 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 but can you see take remove your eyeball cut your hand off sell everything then you can go to heaven without a hand and without an eye you know imagine if really we did that a lot of them will have black glasses in the churches because they will not have eyes a lot of them will not have hands to lift their hands up and praise god because their hands are gone i lift my hands up there won't be any hands up to lift and worship god and if you sell everything even your clothes you won't have clothes brothers we have to understand this the church needs to understand this and god is the one you know deuteronomy talks about god is the one who gives us wealth to god is the one who gives us power to become rich not our uh, fearful sermons not our dangerous tactics of if i don't say this and put fear in the congregation <laughs> you know my church will not function it is not the congregation that is helping you financially congregation is not giving so that you can run the church congregation is giving people are giving you and me are giving because we love god and we give it to god not the church not the congregation not to the projects not to the pastor definitely unless god says give specifically to the pastor give specifically to the project but whatever even if you're giving to a project or a pastor you are basically giving it to god you're saying god you have spoken to me and i need to give to the pastor it is not to the pastor because of the obedience of what you told me i'm going to give it to you god you know jesus said whatever your right hand does let not the left hand left and right not know about it so whatever giving in the church we do should be done for god and forget about it forget in the sense don't bring it up again just say god you told me to give it and i'm going to give it and that's the seed that i have put it in and put it in the good ground there are a lot of people that are there lot of ministries that are there lot of vision that is there but not godly vision be careful put it in a good ground because you want a hundred fold fruit not 30 60 nobody wants to you know give money and say ah, okay it's okay 30% if i get it's okay no if there is a choice if there is an option of 100% you want 100% you don't want 30% if someone comes and sells you if you give me this money i will give you 100% return in another 6 months but there is an all, also option you can choose 30 and 60 what do you want to choose obviously you say no no i don't want 30 or 60 i want 100 every seed that we are sown in the bible there is so much that is talking about money majority of jesus's teachings almost 70 80% of jesus's teachings and the bible is talking about money wealth possessions 
I'm not preaching the prosperity of the, the, the gospel of prosperity. There is no gospel of prosperity, brothers. Paul, Peter, John, James, Jesus all talked about the gospel of grace. It is mentioned in the Bible. I will tell you, gospel of grace. There is no other gospel. We keep hearing about prosperity gospel, healing gospel, immortality gospel. I mean, all kinds of gospels we keep hearing. In the last days, that's what is going to happen. So what I'm trying to say is that we have heard all these teachings. When you give, you basically give to God. And from Genesis to Malachi, it is basically, it is Old Testament. And then Jesus comes and the new era starts. And even at till the death of Jesus, the New Testament has not begun. Because a testament is basically a will of a person. Testament is a covenant or a will or a, an agreement and that agreement in hebrews we saw in the in the grace series we in hebrews we see that the testament comes into existence only after a death of a person you may have written a will when you are alive your children cannot make use of that will because you are alive yes so a person has to die for that will, for that agreement had to come to pass. So Jesus enters and the New Testament era starts and his will comes into effect the day he died. That is the time it got into action. Then, then why do we call it New Testament from the Gospel of Matthew? Exactly. We don't teach this. People don't teach this. Jesus came so that he could fulfill the entire Genesis to Malachi. Whatever from Genesis to Malachi, God prepared every book. In every book, if you see the theme of the book, there are so many songs, so many poems that talk about the themes and how Jesus is related to those themes of each book of the Bible. So the Old Testament was a shadow, shadow of the things that were supposed to come. When were they supposed to come? Jesus. And all those shadows, what are the shadows? You know, shadows of Jesus doing this, the Passover lamb, the festival of Pentecost, the festival of tabernacle, the rituals, the sacrifices, the prophecies, the prophets, how they have prophesied about Jesus' coming. Exactly. People don't know that. And people just, just talk so many things just because they got saved and God called them. God bless their hearts. They have a desire to serve them. But brothers and sisters, if Jesus had learned the scriptures, Thoroughly, he knew. I mean, he had to be trained because Jesus came in a human form. He came as a human being. And Mary had to teach Jesus. Joseph had to teach Jesus. Jesus did not know. They had to raise him up. And he learned because Mary said, Beta, no, you are not the ordinary. You are extraordinary. You look natural, but you are supernatural. Supernaturally, Gabriel came to me and appeared to me. I got scared. I thought, gone case. My day is the last day today. But Gabriel said, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor in the eyes of the Lord. And Mary had recited everything to Jesus and said, Jesus, you are not an ordinary guy. I, uh, I was not even married when you were born. I was uh, engaged to your father, Joseph, but my, your dad, I, I don't blame your dad. You know, he wanted to leave him because leave me secretly because he's a good man. He was not a bad man. He was a bad man. He would have called the elders of the community and stoned me to death because the law said anybody that is found with a child 
in, 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 in before the marriage in adultery they are supposed to be stoned to death and uh, remove them from the community that is the law that is what Deuteronomy talks about and Mary had to tell Jesus about all these things Jesus had to learn 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 Paul was a Pharisee he was he knew A to Z of everything in the Old Testament he went away three years. He was gone after he saw Jesus. He was gone to Arabia and he searched the scripture, search, 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 search. And today we are teaching about what Paul had found, the revelations. So many revelations Paul had. And that is why he's the one who wrote almost the uh, maximum books in the New Testament. And so what I'm trying to say is, God bless you, you are saved. You need to know the word. You need to grow in the word. You need to be trained. Don't just, you know, say, God called me. Okay, God called you. But get proper training. Go sit under a mentor. Sit under someone that knows the word. Not just, you know, some guys, you know, just preach and talk. The other day, just a few days ago, I got a video of a very, very famous person lacks hundreds and thousands of people follow him and he is saying in the media he is talking about God is going to kill you God is going to be miserable God is going to destroy you he's going to remove your son make them kill them God destroy them God and all that it's not going to work because from Genesis to Malachi it's a different dispensation different era different rules different laws that are mentioned there that does not work when Jesus after Jesus is uh, death and we are in the AD after death of Jesus dispensation there was a dispensation in the garden of Eden and then there was another dispensation from after that till Moses a law was given from the time Moses's law till the death of Jesus that was another dispensation and now we are in the dispensation in a different dispensation the dispensation of law the dispensation of grace exactly people do not understand this and people just take scriptures out of context and keep taking pulling from here pulling from there not knowing the history not knowing the geographical settings not knowing the grammatical uh, you know in greek and hebrew and not studying anything they just get into so many wrong teaching heresies false teachings that's how we got so many uh, cults that are born in in our uh, in our time lot of wrong teachings and in the last days it's going to be confusion after confusion after confusion and I want to tell you guys be tuned for the next episode I know the episode is going to end but write down this is going to help you this is going to help your church this is going to help your family this is going to help you when you give to God it's going to be you have to get a hundred percent you have to get the returns of what you are giving not that God needs your money God does not need your money God said this mammon he he he, he said this is least money is the least in a person's life and if you cannot handle this least thing that is in the world how can you handle everything else I'm not telling don't give I'm saying you have to give it is it is mandatory to give we will see in the next episodes so be tuned and uh, get hold of till i get the next episode get hold of the youtube get hold of this grace series that i've spoken on the youtube and you will you will make it will make a lot of sense a lot of sense it may be uh, too many verses or whatever but you need to know the word you know you cannot not know the word and try to interpret the word so brothers and sisters Today, I want you to know that God is a loving God. God is a gracious God. He is not trying to break your hand or leg or put you in the accident and uh, take away someone that's beloved to you and uh, take them to heaven. God gave it and God took it away. You know, all that dialogues we keep uh, uh, saying and uh, that's not what God intended. So, I want to tell you, 
what is god god's a loving god god's a gracious god uh, god is not wanting your money but when we give money this is the least that we can do is to give money which controls our life we we live why are we living so that we can feed we need money we money is important to run the church the tv channel to so many things charity and orphans and this and that so many things but money is very important jesus uh, said that that's the least so remember the old covenant agreement and the new agreement two different you cannot keep those laws and rules and play here or you cannot take these rules and laws and play there nor you can mix the law you know do a mixture you know like whatever mixture that we eat you can't have those mixtures you need to be under one rule and you know or the other can't be lukewarm hot or cold okay so i pray that the lord would open the eyes of your understanding god bless you tune in and stay tuned for the next episode tomorrow or whenever it's coming god bless